Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about setting up auth with Firebase. Um, specifically, I, I want to show you how to set up a login and sign up page um, in your application. Also, uh, show you how to gate content inside the app behind an authentication wall. Um, and we're also going to talk about how to set up the Firebase application, add it to the app, and also set up authentication within your Firebase app. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this app is not going to be a particularly complicated one. The point of this video is not really to um, get too much into a, a fancy design and everything. I really just want to show you how to set up these pages and gate the content in your app. So here we've got just a really basic login page with email password. Uh, we also got the ability to click this sign up button here. Uh, here we see um, email password and then a password confirmation. Um, either way, whether you sign up in the app or log in here, that's going to take you to a homepage in the app. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, type in my email here that I created, my password. We're going to log in, and that's going to take us to this homepage in the app that just says you're logged in with this email. Um, if I were to kill the app and I were to, sorry, open this again, we're going to see that I'm still logged into the app. Um, and I can do that over and over again, and my session will persist until I sign out. And then if I restart the app again, it's going to recognize that I'm still signed out. So that's what we're going to be setting up here today. I want to keep it really simple, and I want to show you that this is really not all that difficult to set up. This is pretty easy, and I think uh, there's just a lot of tutorials that make it more complicated than it needs to be. So um, before we get started, what I am going to do is we're going to start by setting up our Firebase app. So um, go ahead and open your Firebase console, log in with your Gmail account, come to this Firebase console page here. Um, you can see that I've already created one, but I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new project uh, to show you what this looks like. So um, the project name, I'll just call it Firebase uh, Authentication Tutorial. I uh, will just call it Firebase Authentication App. All right, and I'm going to see here there we go click continue uh, I'm not going to enable Google Analytics for this project but if that's something that you need for your app feel free to do that so it'll take a second here create our application um, while that's running let's go ahead and get our Xcode project started so uh, I'm going to open Xcode and start a new project um, it's going to be an iOS app uh, we're going to call it Firebase Tutorial uh, or Firebase Authentication App. Hopefully it's a different name than the last one that I made when I was initially building this. Um, I'm going to do this using storyboards. I will do another video using Swift UI, um, but I think there's still a lot of uh, use cases where people want to know how to use this using storyboards. And honestly, if you're familiar with Swift UI, it should be a pretty easy translation uh, given that the UI is so simple. But we'll go ahead and use storyboards for this one. Uh, language is Swift, and we'll go ahead and click Next. Drop it wherever you're wanting your project to be. All right, and then let's go back here to Firebase for a second. Looks like our project is ready, so let's go ahead and jump in there. Uh, we're gonna make it an iOS app, so I'll click this little iOS button here. Um, we need to give it a bundle ID. So whatever you made the bundle ID when you made the app, it should be right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and copy this and put that um, in Firebase. So I'm going to put mine in. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Firebase authentication app is what I put. All right. And then you don't need to put a nickname or a store ID unless you have one. I don't have one right now, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over that. You can always add it later. And that's going to generate this Google service info.plist. If you're familiar with Firebase, this should be not new to you, but in case it's new, you're going to download that file. Um, and then all you're going to do is just drag it into the root um, project directory. So um, from my downloads here, um, I'm just going to drag this file here from my downloads and I'm just going to drop it in the root directory here and just click finish. So now we've got that there. Let's go back to Firebase. Um, the next thing it's going to have us do is add the package to the project. 
Uh, again, this may be repetitive for some of you. You guys may be familiar with this, but just walking through the whole process just in case. I'm gonna add this as a Swift package. So you're gonna go to File, Add Packages. You're gonna paste that URL that Firebase gives you, and we're gonna click Add Package. Um, this will take a second to fetch it, and then it's gonna give us a list of, um, of components within this library that we can select from. Um, since we're only doing auth in this tutorial, that's the only one that I'm gonna select, but you can select all the other ones that you need if you're doing other things with Firebase as well. Um, so let's see here. While that's loading, we'll come back here and um, the really the final step once that's done is we're just going to configure the Firebase app and our app delegate. So we'll do that here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Firebase Auth here and click Add Package. That's gonna go ahead and add it. And then all that's left to do is we're gonna to go to the app delegate. We're going to import Firebase uh, Core. And right here, we're gonna call Firebase App. Let me make sure I got it right. Yeah, Firebase App.configure. And that should be enough to get Firebase working in the application. Um, we can, let me make sure there's no other steps that I'm forgetting about. Yeah, looks good. So we'll come back here to Xcode, run our app, make sure that everything is working properly. It'll take a second to compile since we brought in the huge Firebase uh, package. And looks like it's running, so that's a good sign. Looks like it compiled. So um, now what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna do a, a quick little bit of cleanup here to the project. I'm just gonna create three folders to organize things a little bit. I'm gonna put my app and scene delegate in an application folder. I'm gonna create a view controllers folder, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the current view controller in there. And then I'm gonna create one last, oop, not a file. I'm gonna create a folder and let's see here there we go new group and i'm going to call it uh, storyboards and i'm going to put my main and launch screen storyboards in that folder just to kind of clean things up a little bit um so now the next thing that we're going to do is uh we're going to first build out our uh splash screen so um if you're you know familiar at all with ios development you know that there's this launch screen storyboard here um, and this is gonna be the page that initially loads while your app is being loaded up by the OS. Um, and unfortunately here, we can't do any logic, which in this application, we're gonna need to do a little bit of logic on the splash screen because we need to check to see if the user has an established uh, session so that we know, do we need to take them to the login page or do we need to take them to the home page? Um, so we can't do that here. So what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna create our, our launch screen here, and then we're gonna create an actual splash view controller that is gonna look identical to this one. The user won't be able to tell the difference, um, but we'll be able to do some logic on that splash view controller. Um, so <clears throat> just for the purpose of showing this, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna add, uh, just, I'm just gonna make a basic splash screen here. I'm just gonna put an image view. I'm gonna center it vertically. I'm just gonna give it a height and width of let's say 200. Um, I'm going to also, well, you know what, for now, I'm just gonna put a, um, a system image. Uh, I'll just put this little person icon for now. Again, purpose of this is not really so much for design. And then I'll put a label down here and I'm just gonna make the label say uh, Firebase Authentication. All right, so this is our splash screen. Again, nothing, nothing really new here. Um, this is just going to show up, of course, when we run the app and the app is, is loading, so we can see it right there. Well, now the next thing we need to do is we need to replicate this design in a view controller that we're gonna call our splash view controller. So we'll just use this one here. Um, I'm gonna, again, do the same exact design that I just did there. I'm going to center an image view I'm gonna give it a height and width of 200. I'm gonna make it the same exact image uh, person. We can change this out later to something that makes more sense, but uh, just trying to convey the point here. So we'll put our label. Uh, again, I'm gonna give it the same 
font size, font uh, style, same thickness. There we go. And then we're going to say Firebase Authentication and center that. Okay, so now if I run the app, we're going to see our splash screen. And then, um, again, it appears like we're just stuck on the splash screen because right now we're looking at this. After the launch screen has loaded, now we're looking at this. This page is where we're going to do our logic to see if the user is logged in or not. So um, let's go ahead and before we do any work here, let's go ahead and create our login and sign up view controllers. So I'm going to add three, actually I'll go ahead and add three view controllers here. I'm going to add our login, our sign up, and our home view controller. Um, and let's go ahead and probably make sense to go ahead and create our corresponding um, class files for these just to go ahead and get that work done. So let's go back to our view controllers folder here. Um, this is the class that Xcode made with the project. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to splash view controller. We can change our file name here. Um, and then we're going to, you just go ahead and copy this if you want. And we're going to create three new files. Just make them Swift files. This first one is going to be our login view controller. And let's just copy this and put login view controller. And then we're going to do that again with our sign up view controller. Again, let's copy this one more time and just change the name sign up view controller. And then lastly, our home view controller. And we'll copy that one last time and change the name. So now we've got a splash login, sign up, and home view controller. Now let's go back to the storyboard and let's hook that up. So um, our splash here, we need to change our class to the splash view controller. And while we're changing these classes, let's go ahead and give each of these a storyboard ID as well. We're just gonna make the ID the same thing as the class name. So this one will be called splash view controller. This will be our login view controller. Let's copy that and make it the storyboard ID as well. Make this one the sign up view controller. And lastly, the home view controller. Oh, did I click the wrong thing? Yeah, I did. There we go. Home view controller. And we'll make that our storyboard ID as well. So now I got our login, sign up, and home view controllers. Um, let's go ahead and build out our UI a little bit. Um, let's start with the um, login view controller. Uh, we're just going to put a button down here at the bottom. This will be our sign up button. I'm just going to constrain it 20, 20, 20, and give it a height of 44. Now let's change this button to a, a default style button and we're gonna make it say sign up. Let's make the text color orange for Firebase and let's make the background black. And I'm gonna make the font a little thicker. There we go. Um, and then we're also gonna have a, in, in the design um, that I made before, I just put a label right here that just says or, cause it's gonna say sign up or log in or sign up. Um, so let's pin that 202020. 20, 20. There we go, Got sign up or, and then let's add one more button. 202020 20, 20, and let's give it a height of 44 as well. Looks like it's a little off there. Uh, let's change the style to default. Hopefully Xcode, there it goes, updates. Uh, so we've got a default style button and this one is gonna say login. Same thing, I'm gonna give it a 16 point font and make it medium. This one, I'm gonna make the text color black and I'm gonna make the background color orange just to give them some contrast. So we got our login or sign up. Now we need a couple of text fields, so let's go ahead and add those. We'll add our text field. Um, again, 202020, 20, we're just doing easy UI here, not trying to make anything complicated. Um, this one, I'm gonna give a placeholder text of password. Um, and I'm also gonna give this a background of light 
Uh, we'll give it a system gray six just to make it stand out a little bit more. Um, and then I think actually I'm gonna go change the bottom constraint to 40, give it a little bit more padding there. Yeah, that looks good. And then one more text field, 20, 20, 20, height of 44. This one we're gonna give a placeholder of email and a background of system gray as well. So we got our email, password, and then our two buttons. And then just for good measure, I'll add a little label up here at the top, 202020, and this will say log in so we know what page we're on. And then I'm gonna give this a pretty big font size just to make it really prominent. We'll make it 36 with a black font weight. So that's looking good, that's our login page. Um, and I know I had us create three view controllers here, but I'm actually just gonna duplicate this one. It'll be easier because the UI is gonna be very similar. So feel free to go ahead and delete this sign up view controller. If you click over here in this left pane, and hit the delete key, you can delete that. And then make sure you click the top level view controller scene element. And I'm just gonna command C, command V to duplicate it. So we've got another one here. Um, and then just don't forget to come up here and change the class back to sign up view controller and fix the storyboard ID. Um, now it'll be a little bit easier for us to, to modify this since it's basically the same thing. So let's click this login label up here and let's change it to say sign up. And then uh, instead of a login button, we want the top button here to say sign up or, and then we'll change this bottom one to say login. And then the only thing missing here is we just need one more um, text field because we want to have a password confirmation field. So let's paste, uh, sorry, let's add one more text field to the page. 20, 20, 20, height of 44. And let's give it a background of system gray six. Um, this will be our email field. So let's make the placeholder email. Let's change the second one to password and let's change the third one to password confirmation. So that's looking good. So now we've got our login and our sign up UI done, um, which is looking good. And then lastly, let's just work on this home view controller UI. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a label to the middle. I'm just going to constrain it 20 left, 20 right. And then I'm just gonna center it vertically. I'll align the text middle and we'll change this lines property right here to zero so that in case the text wraps, if you set the lines to zero, it gives it the ability to go down to multiple lines. Um, so we're just gonna say, uh, welcome to the home page. We'll just put that for now. And uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger font. There we go, looks good. And then the last thing on this page is just gonna be a button at the bottom and this will be our sign out button. Uh, and we'll give this a height of 44. Again, make the style default and let's put sign out and change our font size. Um, and, oh, and then we'll, uh, we'll also change the text color to black and we'll change the background to orange. There we go. So that is the UI for our whole app. Um, but still, as of right now, we're coming to this splash view controller and nothing else is happening right now. There's no way to actually get into the rest of the app. So let's go ahead and start working on that. So let's go to our splash view controller. And this is where we're gonna wanna check to see if the user is authenticated or not. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to import Firebase Auth, the package that we added. Whoops, there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're going to listen for the state of the, um, the authentication to become available for us. So we're gonna say auth.auth.addStateChangeListener and this is going to pass back an auth object and a user object. 
Now, if this user object is nil, then that means that we're not logged in. And if we get a user object, then of course we are logged in. So that's all we're really checking for here. We're just gonna say, if um, user equals nil, then we're going to navigate to the uh, login page. Otherwise, we're going to navigate to the home page. So um, to do that, again, this, this is not a, uh, a fancy UI of an app. So all we're really going to do is just change the present view controller um, to the page we're trying to go to. So very simply, what we're going to do, if you, have a, if you have a navigation controller in your app, or something like that, something to navigate between pages or you wanna present them, you can do that. Um, I'm just gonna do this very, the very simple way. So we're going to first want to instantiate our login view controller. So to do that, we're gonna say let VC for view controller equal uh, UI storyboard. The name of our storyboard is main. So I'm gonna call it main. And the bundle is also dot main. So UI storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier login view controller. Now this identifier, if you don't know, comes from inside our storyboard. We, that's why we added this storyboard ID here. So that's what we're instantiating based off of. So we're going to instantiate a login view controller. And then we're just going to call um, self dot view dot window dot root view controller equals vc so that's just going to replace the window root view controller with the login view controller instead of the splash view controller now if the user is logged in um, then instead of going to the login view controller we're going to do the same thing but so we can copy this code except instead of the login view controller we're going to go to the home view controller so this should work as it is. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure that we are indeed going to the login view controller. And it looks like we are. As soon as the splash controller was up, it recognized that the user was nil and it took us to the login view controller. So uh, that's working as it should. Now we need to go to the login view controller and add some logic here. Um, before we do that, let's go to our storyboard and let's open up our assistant editor so that we can add some IB outlets here. So let's create an IB outlet for the email text field. Let's create another IB outlet for the password text field. And then let's create a couple of IB actions for our buttons. So we're going to create one called on login button tap and we're going to create one more for on sign up button tap beautiful so that covers all of our um all of our ib outlets and ib actions so instead of working in the assistant editor let's just go ahead and click on our login view controller here to get a full size view so what we're going to do here is when the user taps sign up, let's go ahead and handle the sign up button real quick. Um, this is again, just going to be instantiating a view controller and changing the root. So let's just copy our code that we wrote here and paste it here. And instead of home view controller, we're going to go to sign up view controller. Let's go ahead and run it and make sure that that's working as intended. And it looks like it is. It's taking us to the sign up view. But if we click log in, it's not taking us back. So we'll handle that in just a minute. Um, before we do that, though, um, we need to handle what happens when the login button is tapped. So um, to start things off, one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the user has entered an email and a password. Obviously, if they haven't, then we need to tell them to enter something. We don't want to try logging in with nothing. So let's say let email equal email text field dot text else empty string. And we'll say let password equal password text field dot text else empty string. So first we're going to want to check if those are empty or not. So we're going to say if not email is empty and not password is empty, then we can attempt the login else we need to display an error message. 
So let's go ahead and do the error message first. So we can say let alert equal UI alert controller uh, with a title of error. Please enter an email and password. And we're going to make this an alert dot alert. And then let's go ahead and add an action to the alert. We'll do that by putting alert dot add action. And let's initialize an action with a title of just OK and just a default style. That's just going to make it so that there's an OK button. And then we're going to present the alert. Uh, let's see, present, there we go, this one. Present alert, animated true. Let's go ahead and test that out real quick, make sure that that is working. So if I just click the login button, it tells me I need to enter an email and password. Now, obviously, depending on your application, if you want, instead of just checking if these are empty, you could also check to make sure that they've entered, for example, at least six characters in their password. Or if you wanted to, you could even check to see if the email um, is formatted properly. But in this case, we're just trying to keep this simple. Um, so we'll just, we'll leave it as is for now. Um, now, let's actually attempt the login if the email and password are not empty. So let's, we're gonna say auth dot auth. Oh, we need to first import Firebase auth. Then we'll say auth dot auth dot sign in. And we're gonna do this with email and password option. And we'll pass in the email and password. And then we're gonna wanna also add this completion closure. So just hit enter and we can call this auth and this error. Now, if there's an error, then we need to present an error message. That means that they entered invalid credentials. But if the error is nil and the auth object is present, then that means that we logged in successfully. So what I'm just gonna do is just to keep this easy, I'm just gonna say if error is nil, then that means we need to navigate to the home page. Um, if the error is not nil, then we need to present an error message. So we'll do that one first. Let's go ahead and clean our code up actually. Let's create a couple functions um, so this doesn't get real messy. Let's create a function called present um, empty error message. And we'll put this code in that function and we'll call it. And then let's just copy this and we're gonna do a present invalid login message. And we're gonna call that one here. And let's say um, for this one, we're gonna say the credentials you entered were invalid. Please check them and try again. And that should present. So if I run this, let's check to make sure that both of those are happening. So if I first click login, please enter an email and password. So let's go ahead and enter an email, which of course this won't exist right now because we haven't yet created an account. So it shouldn't work. If I click login, it's gonna say the credentials you entered were invalid. Please check them and try again. That means that Firebase is working properly. It doesn't actually see this account. So it's gonna give us this message. So that's good. Um, now, what I noticed is that we didn't protect the password field here. So let's go ahead and go back to our storyboard and fix that real quick. If we go to our password text field, you can go to where is it at? Here it is, the secure text entry option. By selecting that, it'll secure this text field so that you can't see um, what you're entering as you're typing it. So I'm gonna enable that for these three password text fields. And if we run that, we should see that the password is now protected. Um, so let's go back to the login view controller. And then if uh, the error is nil, we wanna navigate to the home page. So let's do that. Let's create, a, we'll call self.navigate to home page. And let's go ahead and create that function. 
private funk navigate to home page. And um, to keep this one simple, let's go ahead and copy this code here. Again, we're gonna be doing something very similar. We're gonna, instead of instantiating the sign up view controller, we're gonna instantiate the home view controller. And that should navigate us to the home page if the, um, if the auth object is present and the error is nil. So our, it looks like our login page is basically done here. Um, so the next order of business would be to get the signup page working so that we can actually log in. So um, let's go to our signup view controller. Ah, and actually before we do this, let's go back to Firebase real quick. Let's go back to our Firebase console. We actually need to first um, enable authentication. So let's go to this build option here. Let's go to authentication and we're gonna click get started. And we're just gonna be offering email and password for now. So let's select that option. Let's um, enable the email and password here. And then for this case, I'm not gonna be doing the email link, but you could enable this if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and click save. And now our email and password is enabled in Firebase. So back to the application. Now, let's go ahead and like we did with our login view controller, let's go ahead and create our outlets and our actions. So let's create an outlet for the email text field. Let's create one for our password. And let's create one for our password confirm text field. And uh, let's create our actions now. So we'll do on sign up tap. And then we're gonna create one for on login tap. Beautiful. Now, um, let's go ahead and since this is an easy one to tackle, let's do our login button. So let's go back to our login view controller. Let's copy the code we use to go to the sign up one. And let's just copy that here. And we'll change it from sign up view controller to login view controller. Now, if we run this, we should be able to freely swap back and forth between the sign, the login and sign up view. And it looks like we can. So back to our code here. So now when we are, uh, when the user taps the sign up button, kind of like the uh, login page, we need to check to make sure that they actually entered something. So let's say let email equal email text field dot text else empty string. We'll say let password equal password text field dot text else empty string. And let password confirm equal password confirm text field dot text else empty string. So now we need to check to make sure that these are not empty again. So we're going to say if not email dot is empty and not password, whoops, password dot is empty and uh, and password equals password confirm. Right, because we want to make sure that the email is not empty, that the password is not empty, and that the confirm password and password are the same. If those three things are true, then we're going to sign up, else we're going to show an error. Um, so making our lives easy, let's go back to our login view controller and let's copy the error message function. And let's paste that here and please enter an email and password uh yeah that we'll just use that for now so let's say uh let's call that function here present empty error message and then to sign up uh what we're going to do is we're just going to say auth oh again we need to import firebase auth so we're going to say <coughs> auth dot auth dot sign let's see what am i what's it called is it create there we go create user sorry i couldn't for, I forgot what it was called for a second uh create user with email and with password we don't actually need to send them the confirmed password that's really for us just to make sure that the user entered 
uh, a value that was the same so they don't mistakenly enter the wrong thing. And then uh, we're going to add this completion handler here. And again, this is gonna work very similar to the way the login page did. We get this auth object and this error object. If the error is nil, then we're going to navigate home else we're going to display an error message. Um, and so to, to navigate home, let's go ahead and we'll copy the function from our login page. We're gonna copy this navigate to home page function. We're just gonna copy that and we're gonna call self.navigate to home page. Here, I'll leave my comment, whoops, self.navigate to home page. And then for the error message, uh, let's copy this function here, but we'll call this one uh, sign or present sign up error message. And then we're just going to say failed to create a new account. Please check credentials and try again. Now, if we dive into the Firebase documentation a little bit, um, we can get different types of errors from this. One might be that the account already exists. One might be that there was an actual error making the request. Um, I'm not gonna worry about diving into those right now, uh, but again, you can read into that and display a more specific error message if you'd like. Um, but I'm just gonna say failed to create a new account. Please check credentials and try again. So let's display that error message here. So we're getting pretty close to being done here. So this should work. This should create our account. Um, and the last thing we really need to do is wrap up our home view controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up the storyboard. Let's go to our home view controller and let's just create uh, one IB outlet for this label here. Uh, we'll just call it home label. And then let's create an action for the sign out button. On sign out button tap. So for this one, uh, when the view loads, let's just display you are logged in with uh, such and such email. So to do that, just in our view did load, we're just going to say home label dot text equals you are logged in with the following email and let's just add the email. To do that, we're going to first need to import Firebase auth and we're gonna say auth.auth.currentuser.email and that will tell them you are logged in with the following email and display the email that they're logged in with. Um, and then when they hit the sign out button to sign them out, we're just going to call auth.auth.sign out. And um, we don't actually need to, uh, what's it? Oh, this, this can throw an error. So let's just put try here. Um, and then if, uh, so for this one, we don't necessarily need to wait for a request to come back because when you're signing out, you're just clearing the credentials locally. This probably also makes a request to invalidate the session, but um, we don't really need to wait for anything to load. So we can pretty much just immediately navigate back to the login page. So to do that, let's copy the function we created from the signup view controller, navigate to, uh, where are we at? Oh, this one right here. We're gonna copy this code here to navigate to the login page. So we're gonna say, there we go. Let view controller equal login view controller and then change to that one. Um, so that that should work. This should be a, uh, a pretty well-functioning app. Let's go ahead and give it a run. Uh, we don't have an account yet, so let's click sign up. I'm going to create an account, cole at cole.com. I'm gonna enter a password and I'm gonna click sign up. And it says I'm logged in with the following email, cole at cole.com. And sure enough, if we go back to Firebase, go to our users here, we see that uh, this is the user I created, this is the date I created them, and this is the last time I signed in. Pretty cool. So now if I um, close the app and let's run it again, 
we should see that I'm still logged in because remember on the splash view controller, it's checking to see if the user is nil or not. And since the user is not nil, um, I can remain logged in. So let's go ahead and click sign out, make sure that that's working. Indeed, it takes me back to the login page. Let's kill the app and make sure that that's also still working, that I'm actually logged out. And sure enough, I am. And then let's try logging in with that user. And it looks like I'm logged in. Uh, one more check. Let's go ahead and kill the app, run it again, make sure that we're still signed in. And indeed, we are. So, um, looks like it's working pretty well for me. The only last thing that I would really add here is I noticed that um, there's a period between when I click the login and sign up button and it actually logging me in. So we might wanna display some kind of loading indicator um, just to do that real easy. Let's go to our login page. Let's add an activity indicator view. I'm just gonna put that right here. And if you click control and drag onto the button, we can add a vertical center constraint and we can add a, uh, it's not showing me my trailing constraint. Let's try this again. Here we go. Let's add a trailing constraint and uh, give it a value of negative 20 so that it sits kind of right up in here. I'm gonna make it white so it looks nice on that orange background. And then um, let's click this animating button here and then let's make it hidden. Obviously, we don't want it to be displayed when this view first loads because it's you know, obviously not loading anything at that time. So then let's go ahead and create an IB outlet for that loading indicator. And all we're gonna do is when we attempt the login here, we're just gonna say loading indicator dot is hidden equals false. So that's gonna show it. And then once the request is done, we're just gonna say self.loadingindicator.isHidden equals true. Regardless of whether there's an error or not, we still wanna hide that, right? So um, let's check that and make sure that that's working properly. So if I log in, colacol.com, and I click log in, we should see a little loading indicator, and then we go to the page. So that feels a little bit better to me as the user. Um, and we can actually do the same thing here on the password page. Or sorry, on the sign up page. Uh, let's go ahead and add our constraint. Let's add a vertical one. I don't know why it's not wanting to show me that trailing constraint the first time I do it. Uh, for some reason, it's gonna make me drag it from over here. Xcode can be very temperamental sometimes. Let's give it a minus 20 again and let's give it a color of white. We're gonna enable animating and we're gonna make it hidden. And same thing, let's create our IB outlet. And when we make this request here, we're gonna say loading indicator dot is hidden equals false. And then when the request is done, we're gonna say self dot loading indicator dot is hidden equals true. And we'll go ahead and test this out. Let's sign out, go to sign up. Uh, let's type in another email. And sign up and we see our little loading indicator. And here we are on the homepage with the correct email. And if I kill the app and open it, we see that I'm still logged in. So that is it. That is how to add Firebase um, authentication to your app as, as simple as possible. I try to keep it really bare bones just to um, convey just the simple you know, architecture of how to do this and, and just the basic framework from here. The sky's the limit as far as what you could do. Um, in another video, I will uh, demonstrate how to do this in SwiftUI. I'll try to put that up here somewhere. And then um, maybe in another video, I can also show how to, um, how to also store user data in a database so that you can you know, maybe have the user upload profile data or images or something like that. Um, if and when I get that video done, I'll put that one up here as well somewhere. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a, a like and uh, also consider subscribing. Thanks.